The claim of this paper is that they have disproven Bohmian mechanics, one of the main alternative theories to quantum physics. If this is true, this would easily be the biggest result in quantum interpretations since Bell's theorem. But after reading the paper really closely for the last couple of weeks, I think I think it's not right. Now you might think that this is just because I'm biased. I mean, I have made a lot of videos about Bohmian mechanics, but I actually don't believe in Bohmian mechanics, even though it makes the same predictions as quantum mechanics. And here's why. In regular quantum mechanics, objects have this thing called their wave function, which is this wave that's associated with every particle. This wave spreads out and it can even interfere with itself. I think a lot of people find it hard to accept that quantum objects really do, in some sense, do every possible thing. Like in this case, they go through both slits. But when you actually do an experiment like this, you see the particles end up in a characteristic interference-like pattern. And so people say that quantum mechanics has to be right, that the particle really did do both things and interfere with itself. But Bohmian mechanics gives a very different interpretation of this same situation. Bohmian mechanics says that the particles are just particles, regular old particles that go on exact paths. And so each particle only goes through one of these slits. But this wave still exists. It's just that its interpretation is different. The wave is not the particle itself. Instead, it's what's guiding the particle. And so instead of this particle just going on a straight line path like you might expect, because this wave is here and it will push it around, this particle will end up on some crazy path and maybe end up here. When you take into account all of the different paths that could have happened, you end up with the interference pattern again. So that's the hack that Bohmian mechanics uses to get the exact same results that quantum mechanics would. It uses the exact same wave function of quantum mechanics, it just gives it a different role. But this does mean that every particle in Bohmian mechanics is just a particle and is always in just one place doing one thing at a time. And not only that, all of its actions are deterministic. If you know exactly where a particle starts, you know exactly what path it ends up taking and where it ends up landing, just like Newtonian mechanics. So you can see the appeal of Bohmian mechanics. And I used to see it too. The problem with Bohmian mechanics though is that we haven't figured out how to extend it and we probably can't. You see, quantum mechanics itself is only an approximation. Quantum field theory is what you get when you take quantum mechanics and you add some relativity to it. When you take Bohmian mechanics and you try and add some relativity to it, it doesn't work. And that's because Bohmian mechanics has a fixed frame of reference, which just doesn't work in relativity. So I think that Bohmian mechanics is really, really important when it comes to the interpretation of quantum mechanics, not because I think it's right. I don't think it is because, yeah, the fact that it can't be extended is pretty damning. But I think that it's an important one to keep in mind because as John Bell put it, Bohmian mechanics shows us that vagueness, subjectivity, and indeterminism are not forced on us by experimental facts but by deliberate theoretical choice. I think it's so important to remember that Bohmian mechanics does produce all of the experimental facts about quantum mechanics when we try and say that quantum mechanics forces us to accept this or that weirdness. Does it necessarily? I mean, look at Bohmian mechanics. Objects are in one place at a time, they don't have to have any subjectivity and everything is deterministic. On the other hand, there's a certain ugliness about the fact that Bohmian mechanics is engineered to give the exact same results as quantum mechanics. That means that no experiment can tell them apart. Well, that's why I was very, very excited about this paper because it seemed like someone had actually figured out a clever experiment that could tell that Bohmian mechanics was wrong after all. And the setup is very clever. Imagine a situation where you've confined a particle to this 1D track. Now suppose that we put a little step in here. Let's say that this particle in fact doesn't have enough energy to go over this step. In regular physics that would be the end of the story, but in quantum mechanics there's this thing called quantum tunneling. In quantum mechanics there aren't those particles, instead there are waves, this wave function, and as it travels, instead of stopping at this wall that's too high, 
there is a small chance it will go through and then turn back around and go out. When the system is in a steady state, there's an equal amount of wave going in and out. And so at every point in this system, including at the wall, there is a wave going this way and that way. So on net, there is zero flux here. Now let's consider Bohmian mechanics. So of course it does believe in particles, but unlike in classical physics, the particles don't just stop here. You get a bunch of particles in this classically forbidden region, but you get less and less of them the further into the region you go. And here's the really bizarre bit. In Bohmian mechanics, all of these particles have zero velocity in the x direction. In other words, none of them move along this line at all. They're all fixed where they are. So in Bohmian mechanics, this speed is zero. Whereas in quantum mechanics, there's two waves, one going in that direction and one going in this direction. And so on net, the flux is zero, but the speed of each of these waves is not zero. So the experiment tries to measure the speed in the x direction and to see whether you get the result from Bohmian mechanics that it's zero, or you get the result from quantum mechanics where the speed of these two waves isn't zero. I'm excited about this video sponsor because I've personally found their services very useful. 80,000 Hours is a not-for-profit that helps you find a fulfilling career that does good in the world. They have a free career guide full of concrete, practical advice that helps you create a career plan that you can actually feel confident in. They get you to consider all kinds of ways that you could be making a positive impact. For example, working on improving the conditions for animals, which I think is incredibly neglected. Factory farming affects billions of animals, but I think that it gets relatively little attention compared to other causes. They have a lot of content on AI as well, and they make the case that if it isn't done well, there are some serious risks that are possible from AI, like the concentration of power in the hands of just a few people. What I appreciate about 80,000 Hours is that they give practical advice about how people can help make sure that AI development benefits all of humanity, whether that's through policy work, technical research, or other career choices that you might not have considered. Everything they provide is completely free. Their career guide, job board with hundreds of opportunities, even their one-on-one -on -one career advising, because they're a non-profit. Their only goal is helping you find meaningful work that makes a real difference in the world. So if you're interested, use my link 80,000hours.org slash LGU so that they know that I sent you. Okay, back to the video. So to test whether quantum mechanics is right or Bohmian mechanics is right, what they do is they add another cavity. So they are going to put in another track that these particles could go into. And these two tracks are coupled. So what that means is if a wave was to start off in here, there is a probability that it will end up going through to the other side and ending up over there. When you actually do the experiment, you find that there's a lot more particles near x equals zero than further in, which corresponds to what we know because this is a forbidden region, remember? And so the waves, when they go in, eventually turn around and come back out. And so they're more likely to only go a little bit in before they turn around than go very far in before turning around. And so the positions reflect that. There's just less particles further in. We also expect that there should be fewer particles inside of the green cavity since they all started in the blue one and only some of them will have come over to the green one. In fact, here I've probably overrepresented how many have ended up in the green one. But there's another thing to notice, and this is pretty critical. If you look near x equals zero, you find that there are way more particles in the blue region relative to the green region. But if you look further along, there's a relatively higher proportion in green than blue than before. The way that quantum mechanics explains this is that this wave at some point will switch over from the blue to the green and keep going. And remember that the longer the wave is inside of the blue cavity, the more likely it is to end up in green. And so the further along in X we are, the longer this wave has spent in the blue region. And so the more likely it is to now switch over to the green one. 
That's why as X increases, you might expect more of these particles to be in the green region. But here's the really interesting thing. If this wave was traveling very slowly, then it would switch over to green at a relatively small X. Whereas if this wave is going super fast, then it's going to switch over to green at a bigger X because either way, it's all about the time taken, not about the speed. And so by measuring the number of particles inside of green and figuring out roughly where this switchover seems to be happening, you can figure out the speed of the wave as it goes through here. And so they do that. And what they find is what you'd expect. The wave speed is not zero. And from that, they conclude that Bohmian mechanics is wrong because it predicted that there are particles all with speed zero. But I hope you can kind of see what the issue is. All of this made sense for measuring the speed of this wave in the quantum picture, but we haven't looked at what Bohmian mechanics thinks of this situation. And so it's not clear that this thing that we were measuring is actually what would correspond to speed in any way in Bohmian mechanics. So let's look at the Bohmian mechanics picture. I'm going to start by saying the Bohmian picture here is going to look weird. Bohmian mechanics is strange. So remember, we were talking about how Bohmian mechanics sees tunneling and it thinks that basically all of these particles are just sort of spawned in this distribution and they're not moving to start off with. But that's only in the X direction. See, I didn't understand this until digging into it a whole bunch more, but there actually is a speed for these particles. It's not in the X direction, it's in the Y direction. You see, all of these particles have some small velocity that is making them travel downwards. So slowly over time, they will drift. That means that if you look at them a small while later, some of them will have managed to get into the green region. This is how Bohmian mechanics explains this coupling. But then how does Bohmian mechanics explain why when X is large, like this region, the green wire is relatively more populated than the blue one? The way it explains it is pretty simple, actually. It says that the speed of these particles in the downward direction depends on where it is in X. So the particles that start off with X is large happen to have larger speeds in the downward direction. They're more likely to have gotten to the green region than a particle that started off with X is small, which has a small velocity. But why is that? Why is the speed in the downward direction of these particles higher than those particles? Well, because the wave function makes it so. Because the wave function is more likely to transition for large x, it translates to a bigger sort of guiding force downwards for large x for these particles. And really, that's all there is to it. The weird thing about Bohmian mechanics is that it works because of this contrivance where it just does whatever the wave function tells it to do. But now you can see what's wrong with that experiment. They thought that the value of X where a particle crosses over into the green region tells you about the speed of that particle going through the blue region. But in the Bohmian picture, it's nothing to do with speed in the X direction. There is no speed in the X direction for any of these particles. It's all about the speed in the Y direction. And so that thing that they measured, which they called the speed in the X direction in their paper, actually just has no meaning whatsoever in Bohmian mechanics and certainly isn't the speed in the X direction in the Bohmian picture. And so there really is no contradiction between what their experiment showed and Bohmian mechanics's explanation. You might be wondering, did I reach out to the authors of this paper? And the answer is no. And that's because I think that this criticism actually has been made by a few other people. And so, you know, there's already papers that have written it, and I'm sure that the authors are aware of this criticism now. But I want to point out that I really like this experiment. I think that even though I disagree with the ultimate results, the fact that they're trying to test the interpretations of quantum mechanics in a really clever way like this is so cool, and I want to see more of it. And hopefully one day we will know. 
what is the correct way to interpret quantum mechanics.